had concerns for a long time. Malika's plan needs too much time, and too many things can go wrong. So, specifics aside, the Pyro Archon confirmed the Gnosis can resolve the crisis, but it comes at a huge price. This is a distress signal for the Masters of the Nightwind, so Auroron was indeed being threatened. Great going, Malika. We're already off to a rocky start here. Bring it! Letting brave names echo! If she's trying to finish that ancient name, there's only one place she could go. His soul is temporarily restrained by us, and it appears to have become more fragile in the process. In the event that a confrontation becomes inevitable, I'll stall the captain while you advance. And once you've learned the truth that the Pyro Archon Malwika would never willingly share with you, you may just find it in your heart to consider my proposal. We have to make the decision for her, here and now. A land without the Lord of the Night, without the protection of the wolves, is doomed from the start. You presume too much. Humanity's survival is worth any price. Charge! Let's give them everything we've got! That man must pay the price, and only Malika's death can clear the debt. All I wanted was to see her again. My end will not come first, and I am not giving up! If I could go back, I would do whatever it took to ensure their survival. You've experienced something similar, Malika. You should know exactly what I mean. Travelers, welcome to the Genshin Impact version 5.1 special program. My name is Gabe, and I'm from the Genshin Impact localization team. And I'm Kai, I'm also from the Loke team, and will be your hosts for today's program. We're usually translating Genshin Impact behind the scenes, so it's an honor to talk about the latest update. I'm pretty stoked about what's coming in version 5.1. Totally. I'm sure that everyone else is just as excited to find out about the new update. Then let's give them what they've been waiting for. First up, Shilonen will be our new playable character in version 5.1. Mm-hmm. Whoa, Shilonen has a lot going on. Where should we start? Yeah, we should probably start with her profession. Of course. Shilonen is a famous smith from the Children of Echoes, one of Natland's six tribes. She forges all kinds of goods, like jewelry, vehicles, and weapons. You name it, and she'll make it. Cool. We've already seen some of her creations, actually. Oh, really? She created the Pyro Archon sunglasses and Kachina's drill, Turbo Twirly. You'll be able to see even more of her handiwork, including the weapons of some of our new upcoming Natland characters. Wow, she's forged so many creations. <laughs> yeah, and they're all really varied. She commands so much respect in Natland, but her job is really challenging. Yeah. What's her secret? Shilonen is a really skilled smith, but her work mindset is the true key to her success. As she likes to say, if you overwork yourself, then your mind and body will settle the score. Yep. You can't accomplish much while you're burned out. 
That's why she believes that it's important to take breaks. So what does she do during her time off? Well, for one, she likes to sunbathe in the tree branches. That's right. We saw her doing that before. Yeah, in the ignition teaser. Yes. But that's not her only hobby. She also likes to listen to music. Oh, yeah. That's a popular pastime in her tribe, right? Absolutely. See those earpieces in her ears? Mm -hmm. They actually connect to a record player. Cool. She made them so that she could listen to music during her work breaks. And the musical beats help her keep up a steady forging rhythm. They're pretty handy. Wow, it seems like her skill set is really convenient. Mm -hmm. And as a smith, her skill set also comes in handy for exploration. Shilonen actually forged some special equipment that make it easier to get around. Let's take a look. Great. Ooh, she's in her Night Souls Blessing attire. Cool. Yeah. Wow, she makes climbing look so easy. Yeah. She can even stop in the middle of her climb and take in the surrounding view. Nice. I bet she finds a lot of inspiration that way. For sure. When she finds something interesting, she immediately springs into action. Oh, she's intense. Speaking of intense, let's discuss her battle mechanics. Shilonen uses special equipment in combat, too. See those three objects next to her? They look like gems, right? Well, those are samplers that were crafted by Shilonen herself. Whoa, those are super shiny. They really suit Shilonen's design. Yeah, and their color can change. The samplers are aligned with Geo by default, but their element will change when you add Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, or Electro characters to your party. For example, if Muolani is in your party, then one of Shilonen's samplers will become aligned with Hydro. And when Shilonen activates that sampler, she can reduce nearby enemies' resistance to hydro damage. Oh, okay. Well, how do you activate the samplers? It's simple. When Shilonen has at least two samplers of an element other than Geo, then hitting enemies with her normal attacks will build up Night Soul points. When Night Soul points are at their maximum level, then all samplers will be activated. This reduces the corresponding elemental resistances of nearby enemies. Okay, I think I understand her kit now. Nice. Shilonen's abilities work best when there are at least two different Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, or Electro characters in your party. Once you have an optimal team, you just need to activate the Night Soul's Blessing state and max out her Night Soul points. Exactly. These skills allow her to reduce multiple types of elemental resistance. Of course, Shilonen also works in teams with multiple Geo characters. If Shilonen's samplers are aligned with Geo, then her normal attacks and plunging attacks deal greater damage instead of rapidly accumulating Night Soul points. Oh, really? Shilonen also has a talent that should be helpful for exploring that land. When Shilonen is in your party, triggering a Night Soul transmission with one of your party members will allow them to regain a set amount of phlogiston. Cool. Shilonen's elemental burst deals AoE Geo damage, and if she has at least two samplers of an element other than Geo, then her burst will restore HP to active characters at set intervals. All right, that's all we have for Shilonen's skills. Yep. Oh, I forgot to mention something important. What is it? <laughs> ancient names. Shilonen inherited the art of ancient name forging. The Pyro Archon even appointed her to forge an ancient name for the Traveler. Ancient names record the deeds of Natlan's heroes, right? It's amazing she can forge something like that. Exactly. Natlan cherishes its ancient names. Few have the honor of being recognized by past heroes, and even fewer individuals have the ability to forge ancient names. Be sure to check out Tribal Chronicles Nanatskayan in version 5.1 to learn more about Shilonen and ancient name forging. And, just like in version 5.0, travelers can earn extra primo gems and level up materials by completing Shilonen's Tribal Chronicle during version 5.1. Speaking of forging an ancient name for the traveler, at the end of the last Archon quest, the Pyro Archon made it sound pretty difficult. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. The traveler is an outlander, so their adventures in Netland aren't recorded in the Night Kingdom. If those deeds aren't recorded, then it's going to be pretty tricky to forge an ancient name for the Traveler. Yeah, no wonder the Pyro Archon said nobody's ever done it before. During the version 5.1 Archon quest, we'll have to figure out how to overcome that obstacle. 
we'll also get the chance to meet Sitlali from the Masters of the Nightwind. Her tribe is said to be extremely knowledgeable about the Wyub, so she might be able to turn the tides in our favor. Yes! Of course, the Traveler's ancient name won't be the only obstacle. The threat of the Abyss remains, and it seems like Auroran, a mysterious member of the Masters of the Nightwind, is working on a secret plan. Ooh, there's so much to look forward to. Travelers can also earn extra Primo Gems from this Archon quest, right? <laughs> You're exactly right. Just like in version 5.0, travelers can earn an extra 500 Primo Gems if they complete the Natlan Archon quest Act 3 and Act 4 during version 5.1. But that's not all. Extra rewards will also be available for exploring Natlan during version 5.1. Travelers can earn a total of 400 extra Primo Gems by completing related world quests and increasing Natlan exploration progress. Travelers who already reach the required amount of progress in version 5.0 can directly claim the rewards during the new version. But don't worry if you're more laid back about exploring new regions. These exploration rewards will be available for two versions. That means you will have all of version 5.1 and 5.2 to satisfy the conditions and claim the rewards. Yeah. Can we expect similar rewards to become available as the map expands in future updates? You bet. Limited time exploration rewards will be offered for all future Natlan areas. Yes. Each time a new region is released, the exploration rewards will be available for two versions. That way, travelers should have enough time to explore the new maps and claim those extra Primo Gems. Each version comes with a ton of activities. You might even come across some opportunities for exploration during certain commissions or events. So you'll definitely have a ton of chances to work towards those rewards. We should give the travelers an example. No problem. In version 5.1, travelers will be able to take part in an event called Aphid Treasure Trace. They'll work together with Shilonen to track down and capture phlogiston aphids. It's not as simple as I make it sound though. These creatures have been corroded by the abyss, which caused them to grow unnaturally large. Wow, is nothing safe from abyssal corrosion? Natlin's really going through a tough time. Tell me about it. Luckily, the corrosion levels are still reversible. Start by unleashing attacks with your characters, then use Shilonin's insect net to break their shields. Once the surrounding shields are down, travelers can purify the abyssal energy inside of them. Elsewhere in Natlan, travelers who venture into a specific underground cavern will discover a secret source automaton that was left behind by a lost civilization. The secret source constructor awaits all challengers. If you manage to beat this new boss, then you can earn special materials. I bet Shilonen would love to get her hands on the parts of that automaton. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we introduced our new character and the new boss. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to the event wishes. In the first half of version 5.1, travelers can look forward to event wishes for Shilonen and Chiori. A new five-star sword, Peak Patrol Song, will be featured on the weapon banner. And in the second half of version 5.1, we'll have returning event wishes for Nahida and Hu Tao. Yes, and new four-star weapons will also be added to the weapon banner during version 5.1. Okay. Keep an eye out if you're interested in them. Oh, I can't wait. But it's about time for our first break. See you soon, travelers. See you soon. <laughs>
Welcome back, travelers. I'm sure that everyone can figure out where we're at. <laughs> yep, it's Sumeru City. Things are looking really festive. That's because we're celebrating Nahida's birthday in version 5.1. I still remember how the Subzeros festival kept repeating during the Archon Quest two years ago. Nahida couldn't celebrate her birthday because the Grand Sage trapped her in the sanctuary of Surastana. Right, and Nahida's character teaser was so sad. Especially during that third instance of, when I woke up, I was riding in a flower carriage. The sudden change of music was so heart-wrenching. Definitely. The Traveler really helped out by exposing the Academia and Nahida was able to earn her people's love, but we all feel like she deserves a true birthday celebration, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, in the version 5.1 event, Chromatic Ode of Candies and Roses, travelers will get the chance to give Nahida the birthday celebration that she deserves. <laughs> all right, finally. Yeah, actually, I have a few screenshots that I can share with everyone. Do you want to take a sneak peek at this Subzerus festival? Yeah, let's do it. Whoa, that's a lot of people. It looks like they're secretly discussing something. This year, the Academia is organizing a birthday celebration unlike any other. Think of it as a small way to make up for their past mistakes. Plus, the Traveler has teamed up with a bunch of friends from Sumeru to prepare a special surprise for Nihida. Oh, I can't wait to see her reaction. Of course, a surprise is only as good as your ability to keep it a secret. So don't give it away, Travelers. The flower carriage is another important part of Subzerus Festival. This year, our Sumeru friends have created a miniature carriage to simulate the parade. That way, it can go off without a hitch. <laughs> That's so nice of them. And the Traveler will serve as the Knight of Flowers during the real parade, escorting the carriage along the route. Wow, so the Traveler is like Nahida's protector. Yeah, it looks like the Aranara are also involved in the festival. If you want to learn more about this year's Subzerus festival, including the birthday surprise, then be sure to check out the event during version 5.1. It's time to make some memories sweeter than candied Ajilenak nuts. Travelers can also look forward to different types of gameplay during the event. Remember the parade simulator that we saw in the earlier screenshot? Travelers can take it for a spin during the event, Rocking Carriage. The goal is to control the direction of the carriage to avoid obstacles while gathering as many flowers as possible. Collect blessings along the way and you'll be able to obtain a higher score. Nice! In the second event, in a reflection of reality and dreams, Travelers will enter unique dreamscapes, search for anomalies within the dreams, and fix them. Oh, so it's like a spot the difference game. That's one of my specialties. <laughs> In the third event, Shadow of the Night's Blade, the Knight of Flowers must eradicate evil on behalf of the Dendro Archon. Earn points by defeating as many enemies as possible within the time limit. You can even increase your performance level and earn buffs by satisfying special conditions during the challenge. Ah, uh, this should be a breeze for the Knight of Flowers. Bring it on. Ha! Ha! Oh, wow. Looks like someone's excited for the Subzerus Festival. I hope travelers feel the same way. Hey, I'm sure they will. In addition to Nahida's birthday celebration, version 5.1 offers other exciting events. In Feast of Pursuit, travelers will be able to earn rewards by completing various challenges. They can even choose their own difficulty setting. Oh, cool. Each challenge comes with unique buffs. Use them wisely to clear the challenge as quickly as possible. You'll find tougher enemies at higher difficulty levels. In Reminiscent Regimen Thrill, travelers will team up with each other in co-op to tackle a challenge with four random stages. Each challenge will feature different reminiscent reinforcements. Selecting a character that fits the reinforcements featured in each stage will make it easier to complete. Each player can choose a strengthening buff before entering a stage. You can give your team an advantage by choosing a buff that works with the specific stage design. It's all about optimizing your teamwork. <laughs> Absolutely. After completing the challenge, travelers will earn thrilling stars based on their performance. Be sure to gather thrilling stars if you want to claim the corresponding rewards. New Envisage Echoes challenges will also be added in version 5.1. Travelers will now be able to obtain echoes for Zhongli and Keqing. Whoa, Zhongli's echo is really cool. Keqing's echo is also beautiful. She leaves a trail of flowers behind her. 
<laughs> Whoa, save some excitement for our other updates. During version 5.1, a few familiar faces will also be added to Genius Invocation TCG. Travelers can look forward to new character cards, monster cards, and action cards. Cool. Version 5.1 is absolutely packed with events. There's even the Aphid Treasure Trace event that we introduced at the beginning of the program. That's not all. There's an old friend we haven't seen in a while. Wait, do you mean... That's right! Lieben will be back in version 5.1! Just like always, travelers can exchange their items for primo gems and level up materials. I even heard that Natlin specific materials will be available during his latest visit! Awesome! That should be all for the version 5.1 events. That means it's about time for our second break. You got it. We'll be right back, travelers. Welcome back, travelers. It's time to jump into the system optimizations. First up, a skip feature will be added to the Spiral Abyss. This change allows you to skip Floor 9 in the new update if you obtained full stars on Floor 11 of the previous Spiral Abyss. Obtaining full stars on Floor 12 will allow you to skip both Floor 9 and Floor 10. Hopefully, this change will create a smoother experience. That sounds so convenient. Yeah, I know, right? Just as a reminder, the Primo Gem rewards from the skipped floors will need to be claimed manually. But floor rewards such as Domain Reliquaries will be distributed automatically when you open the Spiral Abyss interface. In addition, you can now open multiple Domain Reliquaries at once. Nice! We don't have to keep opening them one by one. Yeah! Continuing with more optimizations, the filtering and sorting logic of the Character Artifact interface has been improved. The system will now remember your artifact set filters so that you don't have to set them every single time. You can also sort by affix for an individual artifact slot. Those preferences will also be saved. That will make it a lot easier to filter artifacts for each character. Totally. The character ascension mechanics will also be optimized in version 5.1. You can now see the craftable amount of certain materials directly in your inventory. A feature will also be added to the crafting bench that allows you to filter recipes by character ascension goals. This will allow you to easily view and craft the number of materials that you need. Now, you don't have to calculate the required materials and quantities in advance. You can do all of that at the crafting bench. Version 5.1 will also be adding other small optimizations. Be sure to check out future announcements for more information. All right, travelers. Some of you might have already noticed, but Genshin Impact turns four years old tomorrow. We've had an incredible journey so far, right? Let's see where this path has taken us. It's time to relive some amazing memories. Let's do it.
sometimes it's cloudy That's what journey means Can't see The scene ahead's blurry But we still must pursue the dream Travel through the heights and shallows Put on a sturdy shell to face the harbor Shining bright in the deep night Stand up to fight many times and know it's all right The scars will finally Do not fear The road not taken The honor is our problem To not go Gentle in the good night The day I wanna cease Comes with the grace of the breeze Here's to four years of Genshin Impact! Hey, happy birthday! <laughs> wow, it's already been four years! Where's the time gone? It really brings back so many memories when I see all those scenes. There's that fight against Storm Terror, the battle of the Jade Chamber, Nahida saying goodbye to Greater Lord Ruka Devada, the Masquerade of the Guilty. I know, and I'm definitely gonna have that song on repeat. That's exactly what I did with the Natland Symphony performance. It seems like this is a good place to announce that Natland's first OST album, Land of Tleayatl, is about to be released. The album contains three discs featuring 78 original tracks composed for Genshin Impact. Yay! We can finally add Natland's regional soundtrack to our playlists! Yes. Alright. Hmm. That looks like all the information we have to share. That means it's time for the special program to come to an end. Is there anything you want to say before we leave? Yeah, for sure. Well, I think there's so much cool content coming in this version, and hey, come on, fourth anniversary, that's so huge. Yeah. I mean, we've put so much work into this game over the years, and every version has been special, but I gotta say, 5.0, 5.1, these have been great. Exactly. I mean... Seriously, Genshin Impact is is not only a game to me. It's my work, mm. it's my life. Right. I play Genshin Impact every day. I talk about Genshin Impact every day. And I interact with players online. It's all these years. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs>
<laughs> it's a lie. Totally. Totally. So if I have to say something this time, we are truly, truly grateful that you guys, our players, are continue playing this game. And yeah. we are just as excited as you guys for what's coming next in the game. Awesome. Yeah. No, totally agree. That's so great. Well, <laughs> unfortunately, it's time for us to say goodbye. Once again, thank you so much for all of the support over these past four years. Hope to see you in game. Bye, everybody. Bye.